He has the bass line. I bet. You know who you know Bootsy Collins is? Yeah. He's he's all about the one. He's all about the one. Yeah. Huh? This is so good. A song called Spare Tire by Ariel Posen and Corey Wong. Corey Wong is one of my favorite guitar players. Um, is he in um, – I have to look this up now. Is he in I, – I, I think he's in um, Wolfpack, isn't he? Oh, uh, he's not in Snarky Puppy. Yeah, he's in Wolfpack. So uh, – or Wolfpack, however you say it. Uh, Wolfpack, V-U-L-F-P-E-C-K. Amazing band. Amazing band. Um uh, he's from Poughkeepsie in New York. There you go. That's like 20 minutes from me. Right. He's 36. Yeah, yeah. He's born in 1985. He plays guitar and bass. Uh, Corey Wong. He's unfreaking believable. He's amazing. And uh, I discovered a Wolfpack uh, through listening to a lot of Snarky Puppy. And when you listen to Snarky Puppy on Spotify, the other yeah. artists come up and Wolfpack come right. up. They're, um, they're incredible. And uh, yeah, he's a great, just such a clean funk guitar player, man. Yeah. He's amazing. Anyway, dude, what's going on? How are you, brother? I'm doing all right. In a, uh, in a little touch of irony, I am starting to learn the, on, on my bass, I'm starting to learn the song that I broke my Achilles to. <laughs> Listen to the music of the Doobie Brothers, right? Is that, is no, that no, it was, uh, it was uh, Blister in the Sun. Blister in the Sun. Oh, yeah. So the uh, bass player for the Violent Femmes, uh, lives in Tasmania. Oh, really? Yeah. He's, he's ridiculously good. He's really good. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, I'll tell you. Uh, his name is, I think it's Brian, Brian Ritchie. I think it's Brian Ritchie. Ritchie. Yes, that's it. Brian Ritchie. Yeah, Gordon, Gordon Gaino Gordon was Gaino, the guitar player. Yeah. Brian Ritchie was bass and vocals and Blaze Garza. Dude, they were like they were like uh, nineteen when they when that first album came out. Unbelievable! With all those hits, like every song on the album was a hit. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, uh, so I'm pretty sure it's the bass player that now lives in, uh, in yeah, yeah. He lives at uh, he. I'm pretty sure he lives in Tasmania. That's cool. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, yeah. hey, welcome to the Agency Hour live here in the Digital <laughs> Mavericks Facebook. This is the group. music hour with Troy. This is the music <laughs> hour. That's right. It's the music out. Hey, where are you guys from? Uh, if you guys are watching this, let us know what country you are from in the uh, in the comments, uh, so that we can uh, just know where you are. And in this episode of the Agency Hour, we're going to do a couple of things. I'm going to I'm going to you're going to watch me use a calculator. That's exciting. I might even try and do it on the iPad. And uh, we're going to I'm going to do a bit of a deeper dive. I put up a live. Uh, uh, I think it was last week sometime around the UVP cheat sheet. I'm going to do a bit of a deeper dive on that. And I want Pete to challenge me. He doesn't know that yet, but I want I, Pete to yeah, challenge I'm, me. I'm coming in blind here. Oh, our buddy yeah. Robert Mecklin's here. Oh, Robert, there we go. Robert, Robert joins us on the uh, pilot call all the time. Uh -huh. Good to see you, buddy. And the, uh, the iPad's dead, so I'm going to need to find a, another. Uh, here we go. I found a beautiful online calculator with ads all over it. Uh, let me know if, you have a, if, if anyone knows a really sexy online calculator that I can use that's not covered in ads for Viagra. Um, let me know. Uh, otherwise, I'll just use one that's covered in ads for Viagra. Here we go. Uh, and what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how you can at least double your revenue for the work you are already doing in the agency. And I know that sounds like bullshit, but uh, stay with me. Stay with me and uh, I will prove it. Um, all right. Uh, so... Let me, let, first of all, let's do the, I'm going to pull up the calculator. Doesn't that fancy Macintosh have, an, have a calculator? Uh, <laughs> gosh, a fancy Macintosh. It does. I wonder if I can, it's really small. And if I shared that, it wouldn't look very, oh, there we go. Maybe I can share the big version. It's still pretty. Uh, let me try this. It's still not very impressive. Here we go. Share my screen. I'm going to share the calculator. Wow. Look wow. at him. That's right. Welcome to math class, kids. <laughs> yeah, Robert says it should be 180 on your computer. Uh, so 
tell me something. Do you know the, Pete, do, hey, do you know the average globally, the average price of a website? Oh, globally. Globally. So we're taking into it's, consideration like India and. Yep. Yeah, right, yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to go with $800. Eight hundred dollars. Okay. No, no, probably higher than that. Probably higher than that. Probably, probably fifteen hundred. I'll go with my final answer: fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred dollars. Um, uh, there was the. Uh, here we go. Uh, there was a there was a study done that took the average. Uh, uh, sm- and we're talking a small business website here, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, the average single a single page website ranges from five hundred to eight hundred dollars. A template website ranges from fifteen hundred to three grand, and a custom website ranges from three to six. Right? It, uh, from from uh, this is rhythmwebsites.com.au. The uh, the average cost of website design for small business falls between fifteen hundred and four grand. So let's let's put it in the middle at let's say three grand. For an average website, right? Far out, man. Three grand. I don't know how anyone can survive doing. Here we go. How do I do this? This is going to be interesting. Whoa! Look at that. Yes, he's got the calculator working. All right. So three grand for a website. Now tell me, Pete. When someone typically comes to you or one of the agencies that you know that we've worked with, uh, what else do they do apart from? build a website. So small business owner, local dentist or a vet or a uh, local whatever comes in and they want a website. What, what else might they do in the, let's say the 12 months that you're, let's say you work with them over a 12 month period, they build a website up front. What else might they want in that 12 month period? So uh, they're probably going to get onto a maintenance plan of some sort. Uh-huh. Uh huh. They're probably going to want to do that may, they may not realize that they want to do it, but they're probably going to need search engine optimization mm-hmm. campaign. Mm-hmm. They're probably going to want or need a content strategy and content plan and content campaign. Okay. How marketing. much is the, how much is the maintenance plan going to be? Let's start there. Uh, $1,200 over the 12 months. $100 over, over the 12 months, hundred bucks, hundred bucks a month. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so 1200 for the maintenance plan. I'm going to add that to the memory. Let me see if this works. Yes, it does. Genius. Um, and uh, <laughs> I could never figure that out in school. I was like, what, how come this, but how come this doesn't work? Uh, and, then, <laughs> and then um, now how, what percentage of local businesses are going to go onto an SEO plan? Five to 10. Five to 10%. 10%. Yeah. Of clients of them, are going to go on an SEO plan. Most of them and, don't and, understand the value, right? Okay. And so, uh, and so how, okay. So five to 10%. So let's say 10%. 10%. 10%. How many, you know what? Let's, let's do the math here. Let's, uh, let's clear out. Let's clear out. We're going to do, we're going to build websites for $3,000. How many clients do you think we can, how many websites do you think we can manage in a year? Did the average agency? Mm. At $3,000. Uh, let's say one a month. One a month. Yeah. So that's twelve. A year, right? That's thirty-six grand a year in revenue just for websites. Right? I'm going to be a bit more ambitious. I'm going to double it. I'm going to say okay. we can do two a month. All right. Right. I'm going to say we can do two a month. Fair. Right? And just because I can. And uh, then, uh, so we've now done, because we need the numbers to work out the percentages, right? So we've done 24 clients. Uh, Robert's saying one a week. Martin Sanders is saying one a week. Okay. Uh, well, let's say two a month, 72 grand in websites. Now, and let's say that we pull a rabbit out of the hat and all of them go on a maintenance plan. And in fact, let's say that is a condition of working with us. Okay. That we don't build a website unless you go on a care plan, right? So that's 24 clients. Now let's just keep the math simple here. 24 clients at a hundred bucks a month on a care plan, right? So 24 times a hundred. 12, let's say that we all started at the start of the year and you know, they were all clients, right? So uh, that's 28, eight, right? We're going to add that to the, 
the uh, memory. All right, now we're up to $100,800 in revenue just in websites and, uh, and, and care plans, basically. Mm-hmm. And you reckon 10% are going to take us up on an SEO plan? On average, yeah. Based okay, so we do. Who we work okay, with. so 24 clients. Let's say we, we, we're a magician and we get three of them on an SEO plan, right? Which is a little more than 10%. And they're paying us how much for an SEO plan? Let's keep it simple and say $1,000. $1,000 a month. So we've got three clients paying $1,000 a month for an SEO plan. And let's say they all started at the start of the year. So now we're at 36 in SEO, right? Add that to the memory. So now we're at 136,800. Anything else that these clients are going to buy from us? Anything else these clients are going to buy from us? Uh, let's, I don't know. Do you want there to be? Well, your, I mean, well, mathematical mathematical I mean are they going to, well, what is the typical scenario? Is Are, are they going to, are we going to do like an email template for them or, uh, you know, or, or is websites care plan and SEO, is, is that all we do? $136,800 for the year in total revenue. Robert's Mecklen saying a newsletter. Robert, how much do we charge for a newsletter? And how many newsletters are we going to do a year for how many clients? Give us the math here, will you please? Give us the math here, please. Give us the math here, please, Robert. How many newsletters are we doing a year for how many clients? And what do we charge? So 700 a month for the newsletters, okay? And uh, how many clients? Out of the 24 clients that we've that we've onboarded, 24 clients that we've built a website for and we are, we've got them on a care plan, uh, how many of those are on the 700 per month? 25%. Okay, six. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Great. Um uh, here we go. So now we've got 20, uh, we've got six by 700 a month and we're going to time that by 12. So that gives us another 50 grand a year in email newsletter or email marketing services. Okay. We're going to add that to the memory. So we're now at 187,200 for the year in revenue. That's pretty good, right? Now, some clients are spending out of that 187,200 all, all of our clients are spending 3 grand on the website and uh 1200 a month on uh on uh the care plans right and the rest and some of them are spending money on SEO and some are on email marketing but let's divide the 187,200 by the 24 clients and get the annual lifetime value of a client. Okay. You with me? Yep. Annual. So we're going to divide that annual client value by 24 is 7,800 is the annual. Someone write that down. 7,800 Post it in the comments. Will you Robert? Seven. (laughs) Robert is now my executive assistant. If you didn't know, uh, $7,800. A year, is the annual lifetime value. Thank you, Robert. Well done. You're, a, you're a, well done, Robert. Thanks for playing along. $7,800 annual lifetime value for uh, each client. 24 clients over the year, right? Uh, gets its annual lifetime value. Well done. Look at that. And and that gets us to the $187,200. So write that down as well. $187,200. $187,200. Or that is annual revenue. Now that's pretty good, right? A lot of people would be happy with $187,200 if it's you as a solopreneur and you have, you know, maybe you had a, a in the Philippines or something. Yep. A developer working with you in yeah. the Philippines uh, and doing like all the website stuff, the care plans and, mm-hmm. uh, and the EDM uh, like managing the email templates and you were using a design service, uh, like a dear designer or a design pickle and you had a really gun designer on your team there. Um, and you know, I mean, this is pretty good. You could, you, this could be profitable, right? You still have to sell 24 clients next year says Robert. Well, Robert, well, stay with me, stay with me. Um, <laughs> did you, so did you that, tell him to say that? <laughs> no, I didn't, but that is right because you, you got to sell the 24 clients next year because otherwise you're not going to get the $3,000 right. for the websites. Right. right. 
And the client's worth 7,200. A client's worth 7,800 a year. Client's worth 7,800 a year. Okay. So here's the switch. Okay. If we had 24 clients, let me clear the memory here. Here we go. Clear, all clear, memory clear, clear everything. This is where I always got it wrong in school. I always got this wrong in school. So clear, all clear, memory clear, right? Uh, now, how many clients? 24 clients. We have 24 clients. And instead of charging them $3,000 for the website and then $100 a month for a care plan, which nobody wants to pay for because they don't like, I don't have to pay $100 a month for Google Chrome to be updated automatically. I don't have to pay, uh, you know, I, when I when I when I have a, a Wix website that might cost me I don't know twenty bucks a month or whatever, it's just automatically updated and the software's automatically up to date and it's all backed up and it happens magically in the cloud. So why am I paying a hundred dollars a month for you to do what exactly? What do you do for a hundred dollars a month on a care plan? We do all the things that Wix Wix does for free, really. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we update the software. We right. update the software, we update the um, the plugins, which is part of the software, and we, uh -huh. uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Run backups, run daily uh -huh. backups or weekly backups uh -huh. or whatever we're running, and mm -hmm. we maybe throw in a few extra plugins that we paid for for security purposes or for caching purposes. Mm -hmm. um, so we speed things up, we keep things safe, we keep things backed up. And then uh -huh. they get, they usually get a little bit of time from our team every month. That's what uh -huh. most people do. Right. Robert says, keep their shaky ass WordPress site alive. Exactly. That's so it, yeah. um, this is what, this is what this looks like, right? Uh, uh, th this is what it looks like if I'm buying pizza. This is what this looks like if I'm buying pizza. Can I have a pizza? Yes. No problem. That'll be $12 for the pizza. But for an extra $7, We'll put some toppings on it. We'll heat it up. We'll cut it and we'll put it in a box and you can take it away. But just for the 12 bucks, here's some dough, <laughs> right? That's what that looks like. It's like Southwest Airlines. Can I get a plane ticket? Yes. Would you like a seat? Yes, that's extra, right? Would you like to be guaranteed to be on the plane? Yes, that's extra. Uh, do you want to bring a bag with you? Yes, that's extra. Would you like a seat belt so you don't, you know, yes, that's extra. Would you like one of the uh, in-cabin people to actually welcome you and say hello to you when you get on the plane? Yes, that's extra. Like nobody wants to pay for the extra shit. So my friend right. Simon Bowen calls this the I should bloody hope so line. Right. Yeah. There's a line in your service offering, right, that is like everything below the line is I should bloody hope so. Right. And the, the problem with care plans is that nobody wants to pay extra for – the website to not disappear and to be hacked and not backed up. I expect that. I expect my pizza to be hot, have nice toppings, be cut in a box so I can take it away and eat it on the park bench with Oscar. I don't expect to have to go and put the toppings on it myself and then try and find an oven somewhere or stick it under the sun to cook it, right? I That's what I expect. Nobody expects your website, their website, they don't expect to pay extra to have it updated. So what I'm, what I'm suggesting, and we'll walk through the UVP cheat sheet in a minute to kind of help you figure out how to start framing this, right? What, uh, what I'm suggesting <laughs> until Oscar knocks it on the ground, exactly. What I'm suggesting is that the care plan stuff is stuff that you just do for free. So I'm going to take the hundred dollars a month that you're earning from those uh, 24 clients, that $2,400 a month you're earning from care plans. I'm going to take that and burn it. We don't, we're going to trash that, right? That is, we're no longer selling that. We are giving that away for free. And I'll walk you through this in a moment. So we've got 24 clients. We're also going to build them a website. We're going to redesign and build them their website. In this example, this is a very specific example where we've got Dear Designer designing our websites and they're costing us $1,000 a month. We've got a, a really good developer uh, in the Philippines, for example, who's doing all of our care plans and uh, building uh, two websites a month and maybe they're costing us somewhere in the vicinity of, you know, 12 to 15 or to $1,800 a month, right? Full time. And 
Your job is talking to the client, helping them design strategy, taking the brief, and then giving that brief to the developer and, and to dear designer. Maybe you've even got a project manager working with you part-time to manage a couple of projects a month, right? And all the care plan stuff is just taken care of by your developer and the automations and something like manage WP or whatever you're using to speed that process up. So in this example, uh, what I'm suggesting is that the website could also be part of the package. Instead of paying $3,000 upfront for the website, dear client, and instead of having to pay $100 a month for right. a maintenance plan, which all those other dodgy web designers are trying to sell you just to make sure your website stays up to date and secure and backed up and doesn't disappear off the internet. Well, guess what? We just do that as part of the service for our insert fancy name of signature system here clients. And it could be our dental rank VIP clients. For example, I'm just going to make this up to borrow from Nicholas Doggyland who runs Dental Rank. Thank you very much for playing along. Uh, as part of our Dental Rank clients, we will update your website. If it needs to be uh, updated, we will just uh, update the design of it. We'll, we'll, if we think it, the design is hurting conversions, we will update the design. We will make sure it's super fast. We'll do some performance management on it. We'll make sure it's backed up and it's secure and all up to date. You don't have to worry about any of that. We're just going to take care of all of that. Okay. We're also going to um, get you more rankings, uh, higher rankings on Google. And we're actually going to make the phone ring more from traffic from search. And we're also going to blah, 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 right? And I'll talk about this in the UVP cheat sheet in a moment. So Al Reese said, the hardest thing to do in marketing is to change a mind. So it's very difficult to sell a website and SEO to a dentist for $1,500 a month because they're expecting that the whole thing's maybe going to cost them three grand all up, right? And 1500 a month is very different to three grand. However, if we don't sell them a website and an SEO, we sell them something else, which I'll talk about in a moment. And it's actually quite easy to get them on a $1,500 a month plan if we can show them that they're going to get a return on that investment, right? And by the way, $1,500 a month is, sounds cheaper than four and a half grand up front. Right. Even though 1500 a month is actually 18 grand for the year, it sounds cheaper than four and a half grand up front. So let just play along with me here for a second. 24 clients at 1500 a month. And you know what? I'm, 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 I'm not even going to give you that much credit. I'm going to say out of the 24 clients that we've got, right, that we're only going to be able to convert, uh, Let's say, what, what percentage of those do you think we're going to be able to convert into a $1,500 a month plan? No idea. 60, okay. 70? 60, 70. I, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to suggest that if you convert one and a half a month, okay. if you convert one and a half a month into a $1,500, hundred dollar a month signature system, you're going to end up with 18 clients, 100 a month, right? That's one and a half a month. I, I mean, I'm, I'm basically allowing you to be a bludger here. Okay. Do you know what a bludger is? Is that an no. Australian term? Um, a bludger is a slacker. A slacker, <laughs> right? You can basically work two days a week and get one and a half clients a month onto a $1,500 a month signature system. So if you've got, if you end up with 18 clients, at 1500 a month, you're now looking at, hang on, that's not right. That is not right at all. Okay, here we go. Uh, 18 clients at 1500 a month, right? You've got 27,000 a month in recurring revenue. 27,000 a month in recurring revenue. Multiply that by 12. 324, yeah. 324,000 a year in recurring revenue. Now, what, where were we? We were at 187. 187.2. We're at 187. So we're almost double. We're almost double. And guess what, Robert? You don't need to go and find another 18 clients next year to pay you $3,000 for the websites because they're on a $1,500 a month signature system and you're just going to update their website for them as part of it. Same amount of work, less clients, more revenue, right? Now, let me prove the math here because if we had the same amount of clients and we were doing the same amount of work, 
So 24 clients at 1500 a month, 36 grand a month in recurring revenue. Times that by 12, 432,000 in recurring revenue. Divide that by two, gives you 216, and we were at 187. So we've more than doubled our revenue for the same work for the same amount of clients, right? Now, there's a couple of conditions here. The 10% of clients that took SEO, that is no longer an option. Everyone gets it. You just get it. It's not optional. It is pointless me building you a website without doing local SEO if you're a local business. It's pointless. It's a vanity exercise. You can show your mum that you've got a nice website. It's pointless doing it if we don't do SEO. We're not going to do it without actually maintaining it and keeping it up to date and secure and back. That's all part of it, right? And it's also pointless having a website and driving traffic to it if we're not capturing leads and emailing your list to get them to convert and getting some, you know, re remarketing to your existing list. So lead capture is a no-brainer, right? Email marketing is a no-brainer. SEO, the website, the care plan, it's the same work that we were doing previously for the same amount of clients, more than double the revenue, okay? Are you spending 3,000 per month for the talent to do the work and you are spending 3,000 per month for the talent to do the work? Well, let's pretend here for a minute, Robert, that you're also at this point, you're also going to hire a part-time copywriter to write the emails for you. So let's say we're going to spend another two grand a month on a good copywriter to write all of the campaigns for our clients because we know what a welcome nurture sequence looks like for a new client who's never done this before. We kind of have that templated out. We give the brief to the copywriter. They write it once for the client, it's done. And then we know what a bi-weekly or a monthly kind of email newsletter needs to look like to get people to either come back into the store, into the dental practice, back to the website, whatever the conversion point is. So let's say we're going to spend another 2000 a month on a copywriter because they're typically going to be more expensive. Uh, it's still costing us, say, 1000 bucks a month for the design service. And let's say we're spending, you know, uh, uh, 1500 or 1800 a month uh, on, on a developer, right? So 1800 a month for the developer plus... Uh, two grand for a copywriter plus a thousand for uh, is 4,800 times uh, 12. So 57, six for the talent. Not bad given the fact that we're over 400 in yeah. revenue. That's like, I mean, I would even say that you could spend, I would suggest that you could easily spend up to a hundred on the talent to service 420,000 or whatever it was in revenue. And you've still got heaps of margin there to run the business, pay for all the infrastructure, pay for the hosting, pay for the software and all the plugins that you need and pay yourself 150 a year as a, as a strategist salary, right? Same amount of work, same number of clients. This makes sense. Who thinks I'm full of shit? Not me. So here's the thing. Let me, uh, let me unshare my screen and let me walk you through an example of share screen. Robert said, Robert said that's a completely different question. <laughs> like that's, that has nothing to do with this. That's got nothing to do with this. Excellent. Okay. So I did this, I did a live stream on this uh, recently, but I'm going to run through it again. The UVP cheat sheet, right? Let me just blow this up a little bit. Let me see if I can do this. There we go. Here's the UVP cheat sheet, the UVP cheat sheet. We all know what a UVP is, right? And I'm telling you now, if you're selling websites and SEO and email marketing, in fact, before we do this, before we do this, here's what I'm, here's what I'm going to do here. Let me share. Let me share Safari. Where's Safari? Here we go. Here's the calculator I was going to use. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that gorgeous? Now, let me... Let me, uh, let me go to, um, let's say I'm a dentist, right? And uh, I want dental website and SEO. And I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm a dentist and I need a website and I think I need some SEO, right? And I come here. I go, all right, what's this? Well, the SEO from 450 a month, page one in 90 days. 90 days sounds like a long time. Professional website design for dentists. This looks pretty good. 
dentist website design. Look at that, dental website design and SEO from only $999, right? And uh, now that doesn't say a month. That just says $999. And I'm asking someone to spend $1,500 a month on my signature system, on my whatever it's called, the dental rank version 4.8 or whatever, right? The dental patient exploder. So the point I'm trying to make here is that if you're selling websites and SEO to clients, you are going to have to compete on price yeah. because the market has been conditioned to believe that that's all these things are worth, right? To sell commodities, now, you got to sell it at commodity prices. Correct, yeah. exactly. So now let me come back to this cheat sheet here and walk you through it. So who are your ideal clients? You don't, it doesn't you don't necessarily have to be in a vertical, okay? It can be, it could be growth-minded small business owners, right? Or it could be marketing managers for nonprofits, all right? Who's your audience? If you don't know this, you've got to do the work. You can't be everything to everyone all the time. Otherwise, you end up just being, your message is so freaking vague that it doesn't resonate with anyone, okay? So who is your ideal client? It could be a uh, really um, motivated, driven, action-taking marketing manager for a nonprofit who has no resources in-house to do digital, all right? They're a perfect client, by the way, because they understand what they need to do. They just have no resources to do it, and they're actively looking for an agency to help them. So who's your ideal client? What is a long-term problem that your clients can never seem to solve? I'm going to walk you through an example in a minute for a dentist, but I'm just going to walk through the framework here. What's a long-term problem that your clients can never seem to solve? In my world, the long-term problem for agencies is all of their leads come from referrals. They just survive on referrals and word of mouth, which is ironic because agencies are in the business of generating leads for their clients, but they have trouble generating leads for themselves. So the long-term problem is that they just rely on referrals. And when those referrals dry up, they're screwed. What is the ultimate outcome, right? What, what is it that they actually want? A dentist might want to take, typically speaking, dentists don't have great mental health because they work too hard and they spend their life looking in people's filthy mouths. And I get it. And so what they want is they want uh, more high profit services, cosmetic dentistry, whitening, Invisalign, all that kind of stuff, right? Because there's way more margin in that stuff than there is doing checkups and cheap fillings. What, what is their immediate issue? And so this is like, I also think of this as roadblocks. Like, why can't they achieve this? Why can't they move away from this long-term problem and achieve their desired outcome on their own? What's stopping them? Right. right? right. What is the, what's the immediate, well, for a dentist, it might be, I'm, I haven't got time. I'm working five and a half days a week. I don't have time to fix this myself. And then what, how are we going to solve it so they don't have to? And I believe the, the, uh, real value and therefore the real revenue and the real profit is in a combination of done for you and information. Now, before I hear you all groaning going, oh, I don't want to get into the consulting coaching space, you're already doing it. Right, exactly. Every time you have a conversation with a client and they ask you, well, how long is it going to take us to get on a page one of Google? You are now coaching them and consulting because you are giving them your IP for free, right? The answer, the correct answer to that question is, I don't know because I don't know enough about your business. Uh, I can answer that question for my clients because I spend enough time in my client's business and we do the analysis and we do the work, but I have no idea. I can't answer that question for you. If we were, a if you were a client and we were working together, we would discover that, that it's part of the process. So a combination of done for you and information is, I believe the real value that you should be offering. And now here's the structure. Once you've kind of filled this in, this is how you write your UVP. And I just want to park here for a second and say, your UVP is not something that you should say out loud with your mouth to another person in real life because they'll think you're a robot and you're a bit weird. It's something that you should use. It's a, it's a structure and a framework that you should practice over and over and over again so that you can say it and it sounds organic and it sounds authentic and it sounds like you're having a conversation, right? Right. Uh, so we help target audience in pain with problem achieve desired outcome by using signature system, which is a combination of done for you and information, right? Let me walk you through an example. Target audience is dentists. Now you could even go deeper on that and say target audience is uh, dentists with at least two staff and, or dentists who are looking to open another practice, 
or dentists who are already doing seven figures a year, right, in, in revenue. So you could even get a little more specific around this. But for the sake of this, we'll say dentists. Their problem is that they're doing low profit work, right? They're spending too much time in mouths doing low, low margin stuff. That's the problem. A bit like a lot of agencies, right? On the tools, doing low budget, low profit work. Their desire is more cosmetic work. Well, I actually think their desire is more profit and less time working. I actually think that's their desire. I actually think this is the vehicle that will get them there, right? So I think their desired outcome is actually uh, same money, less time, or less time, more profit. Really, that's what they want. Work less, more profit. The pain that they're in right now is that they're time poor because they're too busy with low profit services. So they're working five and a half days a week. And on the week and a half, they, the, day, the Saturday afternoon and the Sunday they have off, they want to spend time with the kids. They do not want to be thinking about their, their business. And then guess what? Monday morning, eight o'clock, they're back in it. Eight till five, Monday to Friday, they're in it. Eight till 12, Saturday, they're in it. They're burning out. They don't have time. They can't take a holiday because they're the only doctor in the practice. They've got two nurses and a receptionist. They can't take a holiday. They're screwed, right? Awful business model. They're completely screwed. They're on the treadmill and they're stuck and they haven't got time. They can't even take a day off to think about how to fix the problem, right? What we would do for them is we would uh, increase profits and free up one day per week by doing some stuff for them and giving them some information. And I'll, let me just talk about that for a second, right? What we would do for them, if you and I are talking backstage, we would say, you know, or in, in, in the green room, we would say, well, cool, what we're going to do, I and mean, this is a no-brainer, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. We're going to, uh, we're going to, the guy doesn't have a, a GMB listing, right? So he's Google, my business is awful. We're going to fix that. We're going to get some reviews from past clients. He's got a, a database of 1500 patients that he's never emailed. This is so easy. We're going to get reviews to pump up his Google rankings. We're going to put in a re an automated review funnel so that everyone that leaves the practice then gives a review. We're going to do a dedicated email campaign to his existing database to get them to come in for hygiene plans, which the nurses run and the doctor doesn't have to do. We're also going to go hard on promoting cosmetic uh, services, Invisalign, whitening, all that kind of stuff. And that might take three months to actually net the first client. But in 90 days from now, the plan is to have the dentist only working four days a week. Fridays and Saturday mornings are just hygiene plans, or maybe he does a couple of hours on Saturday for people who can't get there during the week. It's uh, all hygiene plans that the nurses run, free him up, uh, increase the profit, and, and he gets a day a week, right? And what we're also going to do is we're going to teach him and his nurses how to talk to people when they're in the seat about whitening and cosmetic services and Invisalign, right? Because he's not having that conversation right now because he doesn't know how to. And so we're going to do that research and come up with the best practice framework and teach him how to have that conversation, right? Which is easy, by the way, like just go to Google and figure that out. It's super easy to figure that out. Like it'll take you half a half an hour to actually come up with a framework that he can use or a new script that his receptionist can use when they answer the phone to book in more appointments or whatever the thing is. So you don't need to do that for him, but you need to be providing information to help him fix those parts of the practice, right? So that's what we would do in the background. On the front end, we're going to tell him that we're going to help him sell more profitable services, free up one day a week, and we're going to do that using the dental practice playbook or whatever it's bloody called. It doesn't matter. Okay. So what does that look like? Well, if you're a robot, you would say this, we help time poor dentists who are trapped on the treadmill of their practice, grow their revenue, increase profits and rescue at least one day per week using our proprietary dental practice playbook. Okay. If you're a human being and you're talking to a dentist, you might say something like, well, uh, typically speaking, we work with dentists who are time poor, kind of stuck on the treadmill of their own practice. Uh, we help them grow their revenue sell more profitable services. Typically we free up a day per week for the dentist that we work with. And we do that using our proprietary dental practice playbook. That's just an authentic. Yeah, that's much more conversational. Yeah. Much you just turn it into a conversation. Yeah. And then the dentist is going to start asking you questions. Oh, how do you do that? How do you do that? Then What's just, the dentist practice playbook? Right. Then how we do just I get having, one? Correct. Then we start having a conversation about how we do it. We don't talk about the technical stuff. We don't talk about no. SEO. We don't talk about blah, blah, blah. Now, same amount of freaking work, ladies and gentlemen. It's a, it's a website. It's SEO. It's email. It's lead capture. It's the care plans, right? Is a dentist going to pay 1500 bucks a month for this kind of promise? Hell yes. The right dentist will. Is a dentist going to pay 1500 bucks a month for a website and SEO? No, they're not. 
So back to the quote from Al Reese, instead of trying to change someone's mind, just change the conversation. Right. Because they don't have any thoughts about that conversation because they're not thinking about it. They're thinking I need a website and I probably need someone to do SEO for me. I don't understand it, but I know I need it. And I've heard it's pretty cheap, right? And then someone comes along with this, they haven't even thought about that. It's like the great example of this is when Russell Brunson launched ClickFunnels. I was thinking about this the other night. The man's a genius. Everyone is talking about websites, 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 websites. Russell says, you don't need a website. I was like, what? He's like saying the exact opposite to what everyone else is saying. You don't need a website. What do you mean? You need a funnel. What's a funnel? And $8 million a month in recurring revenue later, he's got the meeting out of the palm of his hand because he just completely switched the conversation, which is what I would be saying to dentists, by the way, if I was talking to dentists, I'm like, you don't need a website. You need a playbook for making your practice more profitable. Huh. Do you do that, do you? Well, matter of fact, we do. And that's your job is to figure that out and to do that. You don't have to become a coach, right? You don't have to become, uh, you know, wh whatever you think that looks like. You don't have to run a mastermind or run live events for dentists and be a dental coach, but you need to help them solve all of the problems they've got, a combination of done for you and information. Right. And the, the, skep sense? the skeptics are going to say that there's, there's missing pieces. How do I find this stuff out? And like you said, it's all in Google. Um, but, how do I, like, for instance, how do I get the best practices for running a dental office? Like, how do I do that? If I've never, Me. like, I've never run a dental office. How do I know if, if, even if I've worked with dentists before, how do I know that, how do I get that information? Let me share my screen. I'm giving you a layup so, here. I'm giving you a took, layup here. I know you are. Thank you very much. It yeah. took me seven seconds to figure this out, right? Um, uh, if the dentist says, well, you know what I really want to do, right? My, I really want to just sell more Invisalign, right? So I, and I don't know how to do that. I, I'm, a, I'm a marketer, right? But I reckon I can figure this out. I'm pretty smart. I mean, I've figured a lot out. I figured out how to build websites. I figured out how to do SEO. I reckon I can figure this out. So um, I would just go to Google and go dentist increase Invisalign services. And I would go, uh, secret dentist incentives drive growth in teeth straighteners. Oh, traditional braces prescribed by registered dentists can cost them. Does not mention there's a news article. Invisalign cost. How much profit do dentists make from Invisalign? A diamond provider, diamond provider, selling 150 cases could bill their clients an estimated $975,000 based on typical pricing of the product. Of that, Invisalign is paid five hundred and seventeen thousand, representing the wholesale price, which would leave the dentist with a profit of four hundred and fifty-seven thousand dollars. Wow, that's one hundred and fifty clients and a half a million dollars. There you go. Uh, so there's nothing here. These are all dental practices, right? So I would then come back here and I would go dental. I would go dentist marketing, increase Invisalign services. Invisalign treatment, Invisalign clear aligners. Da, da, da. Here we go. The B2C and B2B marketing transform transformation, helping Invisalign. I would bookmark that. Invisalign marketing for dentists. Oh, now we're getting now we're somewhere. Talking. I would bookmark that. Uh, Align Technology uses a new campaign to enhance this product. It's all about the brilliance of the orthodontist and how it's Okay, so that's a article on a marketing campaign. I would bookmark that. Uh, here we go. Look at this. Aligner Advantage, helping top-tier dental practices grow. Do more Invisalign, veneer, and implant treatments and potentially increase revenue by over $600,000 in 12 months without more clinical hours. Boom. Ladies and gentlemen. I, now, you would think that this is scripted. Clearly, it's not, right? I'm not that good an actor. And I know Pete does a bit of amateur theater, but he's not that good an actor either. So we couldn't make this shit up. Uh, here we go. Have a look at Johnny here. Hello, Johnny. He's, he's looking fantastic, isn't he? Um, right. So now, now what now? Here's what I've done previously. Let me go to, let me go to my Google Drive for a moment and uh, bring something up. I did this recently at uh, Mavcon and I dentist. 
dentist guide to increasing the lifetime value of customers, lifetime value of patients. So I did this. It took me seven seconds to find a Google search. And then I gave this to my copywriter, uh, Beck, and it took her about 24 hours to turn this around. And now we have this epic guide here, which I'm doing nothing with. I just did this as an example. We have this epic guide here on how dentists can increase the lifetime value of their patients. I would turn this into a playbook, right? I'll show you an example of a playbook in a moment. I would turn this into a playbook and give it to my dentist and go, hey, uh, we, we're not going to actually talk to your clients for you, but uh, here are some ways that you can think about starting to increase the lifetime value of your patients. The first thing you've got to do is work out the lifetime value of your patients. Do you know what that is? No. Well, here's a formula. Go figure it out, right? And then we're going to talk about episodic versus lifelong care. Eh. Then we need to create a memorable new patient experience. Eh. What's that? I would stick a trademark on the end of that, right? And go, oh, that's not a trademark. What's the, uh, uh, what's the trademark? There we go. Create a memorable new patient experience, right? Um, uh, and, and it's all here, right? <laughs> I mean, turn this into a beautiful playbook. Let me show you an example of a playbook. We do this. Uh, here we go. The Mavericks playbook. Here we go. Here's a playbook for running a sales call. Take some screenshots. Take some screenshots. Here's a beautiful playbook. Now, you would brand this yourself. You would have, you know, dental rank 2.0, right, or whatever it's called, the new patient experience playbook, right? And then you just have the, the you know, the description here of, you know, the why, the script, what they need to do, the checklist, whatever it is, right? Here's a playbook. So this is our playbook for agencies running a sales call. It's all here. We give this to our agency clients, right? You would have a playbook and you would give to dentists. The other example I want to show is the, where's the local SEO one? Local SEO accelerator. Here we go. Here's a local SEO accelerator playbook uh, that we give our agency clients, which is basically a checklist, right? So here's why you should run local SEO. Here's what's included. And then here's the checklist, month one, month two, month three. Here's how to do it. This is Pete Perry's. Who's uh, that handsome guy? There we go, local SEO accelerator. This is an example of a playbook. It's a beautifully branded PDF that you give them, right? So what we did is we took this, the dentist guide to increasing the lifetime value of patients, I would turn that into a playbook and give that to my, in fact, I would use it as a lead magnet. I would give one of these away as a lead magnet to then get on the phone and have a conversation with the dentists, not about building websites and doing SEO. That's a given man. Like that's, we're just going to do that anyway. We do that for our dental rank platinum clients or whatever the you know thing is, right? Come back to the aligner advantage, right? Um, you know, that's what, that's what, I mean, that's basically what these guys do here is help dentists grow. Look at that. I mean, seriously, come on, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Get rid of the cheesy stock images. <laughs> so uh, the answer to the question is you don't need to know how to do all this stuff. You just need to know how to use Google. Right. right? Uh, and and you, you can take it to the next level by having the playbook with a video that accompanies it and like, you know, correct. Take it to the uh, next level. Anonymous Facebook, oh, hello, phone's ringing. That's my wife. Should I bring her on the call? Uh, anonymous Facebook user says, the secret offering is you are a community builder for your clients. The nuts and bolts are your domain to make it easy on yourself to build it and manage it well for low cost and top-notch quality. Guess it's just a matter of choosing an industry to serve. Yes, Great. exactly. Um, and it is from Australia, so we can steal it for the US market. Exactly. Uh, Martin, what happens? This is a great question. What happens when a client starts sending a long list of features or changes? How do we cover the demanding situations where clients link to apple.com as their inspiration? Martin Sanders, this, my friend, comes down to a beautiful thing that I learned back in 2007. It was, I learned the concept of positioning. Yes. Tell me the last time you went to the dentist to continue the example and said, uh, Hello, Dr. Bob, while you're in there, uh, I think I might also want you to um, make that tooth there blue. Yeah. No, just for fun. Can you do that for me while you're there, please? Oh, no, I don't want to pay any extra. Just make that blue, will you? What do you think the dentist is going to say? I'm sorry, mate, we don't do blue teeth. Oh, but there's a guy down the road with this fancy mohawk yeah. and a blue tooth, and I really like it. Sorry, mate, we don't do blue teeth. We're here to fix your teeth. We don't do blue teeth. Now, he's a dentist. He's in your mouth with sharp utensils. Who wins that argument? Who wins that argument? Right? And there's a nurse with a vacuum in the inside of your cheek and a dentist with a knife in your mouth. Who right. wins that argument? The dentist wins. Right? It's called positioning, Martin. Yeah. 
Yeah. The, if they are sending you features or changes and linking to apple.com as their inspiration, the simple fact is they don't trust you. That's the reality. Yep. Right? And the way to get them to trust you more uh, is uh, <laughs> the way to get them to trust you. My wife left her keys in my car. Oh, that sounds like an Amy problem, not a Troy problem. <laughs> that sounds like an Amy problem, not a Troy problem. If you're watching this, darling, I know you're not in the group, but if you do watching this, it sounds like a you problem, not a me problem. Sorry, Amy. <laughs> um, second most common thing my wife says to me is, where are my keys? Second most common thing that I hear her say, where are my keys? I won't tell you the first uh, most common thing that she says. Um, it's usually, you know, shut the front door and put the bins out, you no good. Good, good for nothing, husband. Um, uh, so positioning, if they don't trust you enough, then they uh, will start telling you how to do your job. If they trust you, they will trust you to do your job and you can tell them to do their job, right? You do your job, let us do our job, right? I mean, not my number one question when someone sends me a feature request or we, we actually have this with agencies who come to us and say, hey, can I, can I get access to that thing you were talking about on the live stream? And I'm like, sure. What do you need right now? Oh, I just want, I just want yeah. that thing that you mentioned. Yeah, why? You get that a lot, actually. Right? Why? What are you trying to achieve in the next thirty days? Right. No, I don't know. I just saw somebody else had it, and it looked really cool. So I think I need it. Right. It's like it's like going to your doctor and saying, "Hey, can you give me that medicine for uh, that allergies?" Well, you don't have allergies. Well, that's okay. The commercial looked good. <laughs> That's right. I love that ad where the guy's in the backyard having a barbecue with his yeah. kids and uh, he's not sne- It's like, dude, you haven't sneezed in 50 years. You don't have allergies. I know, but the ad looks so good. I want the medicine, right? Uh, so that's how you answer that question, Martin. It's like if that's happening to you, brother, they just don't trust you, okay? Uh, any other questions? I'm going to need to go and sort out this fucking issue with the keys in my car. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's like... Wow. Wow. That's a real pain in the ass. Uh, any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Has this been helpful? Has this been helpful? Oh, by the way, we should announce we have a training that is live right I'm now. Waiting for this. We have a training right now uh, that is Does this live. Lead us to the, anything? Yeah. It's called the Godfather Method. Let me just pull it up here and uh, show you what it's all about. I'm very excited. The other day, a couple of weeks I'm very ago. excited about this. Uh, it's called the Godfather Method. And what basically the Godfather method is a deep dive into helping you create offers that your prospects can't refuse. Okay. I'm just going to share the screen with you. Uh, stop that and share this. How's your day going to go, Troy? <laughs> I don't know yet, Robert. <laughs> Ask me in a couple of hours and I'll tell you. Well, I think it's going to be, it's going to be an Uber issue. That's what's going to happen. The keys are going to get into an Uber and uh, go home to my wife um, with a, a note. From, uh, from the husband. <laughs> that's what's going to happen there. Where is uh, the, uh, here we go, Chrome tab. Oh, that's a bit weird. Uh, let's not do it. In, when you try and do that in StreamYard, it all turns to it all turns to poo-poo. So I will do it in Safari. Here we go. Uh, come here, StreamYard. Where are you? There we go. Right. So the Godfather method, how would you like to double or triple your revenue for the work you're already doing? Right. The uh, we talk a little bit here about the problem is that you're selling commodities. If you are in the business of selling websites and SEO, then you are selling commodities. Good luck trying to build a profitable business at those price points. Al Reese said the single most wasteful thing you can do in marketing is to try and change your mind. So don't tra- don't change the mind, change the conversation. Right? We have some testimonials here from some of our clients who have been through some of this training and taken action and uh, transformed their business. The seven elements of an offer they can't refuse. We kind of walked through this a little bit today. There's some more detail here. Here are the details on the Godfather method. This is open for a very short period of time. In fact, it closes in three days. And what we are going to do is we're going to work. This is not drip fed. So uh, the training rolls out next week. It's available next week. We are enrolling clients now into the Godfather method. It rolls out next week. You can binge on it. You could get through it in an afternoon. Okay. Okay. And we're going to help you create offers your prospects can't refuse. And here are, here are the elements. I'm going to walk through the elements right now, right? Who is it for? What's the problem they currently have? What are your pillars of transformation? 
What is your signature system? What is their desired outcome? What are your stepping stones or quick wins? And then what is your ultimate trigger to get them to take action and start paying you 1500 a month for the work you are already doing, right? And rather than selling it ad hoc and waiting for them to come to you and responding to their requests, let's get way more proactive about this, make them an offer they can't refuse and get them onto the $1,500 a month payment plan uh, a signature system. That's where it should start, by the way. $1,500 a month is where your signature system should be yeah. starting. We have Maverick selling signature systems for $3,800 a month. $3,800 a month, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, $45,600 a year from one client. You don't net, like, you get 15 of those clients and you're almost at seven figures, right? 45, six by 15, 45, six, 45, six by 15. $684,000. You're almost at three quarters of a million dollars in revenue. Same amount of work, just a different offer. Okay. So Martin wants to know, how does this compare to the sales accelerator? Good job, Max. Max and I are right on like, boom. Great question. So this full transparency, this is in sales accelerator. If you are in sales accelerator, the, the you, don't need to, you don't need to buy the Godfather method because you get this. Great. This is in Great. sales accelerator. Uh, Martin, this is, where you use your offer, Sales Accelerator is a complete sales process and sales pipeline. Are you in Sales Accelerator, Martin? Is Martin no. in Sales Accelerator? No. Okay. Martin, what the hell Martin, is wrong with were, you? Were you in the previous version of Sales Accelerator, though? That's if, what I want to know. Okay. Uh, if, if, you, if you're in Sales Accelerator, you'll understand the process, the sales process from start to finish, right? Where you use your offer is right at the start of the sales process to get people to raise their hand and express interest in what it is you're doing. And then right at the end of the sales process to close the deal. That's where you use your offer. You tease the offer at the start and you present the offer at the finish of that sales process, which can take typically anywhere from, you know, I've seen it happen in 72 hours to three months, depending on the client and the price point of your signature system. So you use it at the start to trigger the sales process and then you use it at the end to close the deal. This is one piece of the sales accelerator training. It's a deep dive into the offer, into creating an offer that your prospects can't refuse. It's not the entire sales accelerator process because the sales accelerator process is all the automations you need, all the different scripts and templates you need and the, the different phone calls that you have and the structure for the, the sales calls and the implementation, the sales pipeline, yeah. the software, all of that stuff. This is just one, this is one piece of it, yeah. Sliver of it, yeah. This is suit like having an offer that your client that your prospects can't refuse will help all of your marketing. So, if you've already got sales accelerated, this is going to help accelerate that. If you've got a high ticket sales funnel, this will help with conversions. If you're running ads, this will help with conversions. If you are networking, if, you, if you're old school doing like networking events, this is definitely going to, if you're in BNI, this is massively going to help because you no longer stand up and say, I build websites and do SEO for local businesses. While everyone else goes, not another bloody web designer who does SEO. Boring, right? Here you can stand up at BNI and say, we help, typically we help dentists who are time poor, kind of trapped doing low profit services in their practice. Uh, we help them get off the tools, rescue a day a week, make them way more profitable. Uh, and we do that using a proprietary method we've built called the Dental Practice Playbook, version 2.4. And people are like, oh, right. So have you got any dentists you can refer to me? Yes. Right? Try going to B&I and saying, I build websites. Do you have any small businesses you can refer to me? I mean, that is like, that is so, that is such, I mean, it's possible, but it is such a hard, such a hard slog because I don't know how to refer someone to you. Right? Small business owner needs a website. I mean, the, there's nothing unique about that. There's nothing specific about that. Right. So anyway, Martin, does that answer that question? Martin, you should just jump into Sales Accelerator, dude, and uh, and get this as part of it. Uh, so uh, so here, here's part one of the training. Uh, it's a two-part training. Part one is uh, uh, basically how to work out the, all the worksheets and the video training. They're super short videos too. Like seriously, you'll get through this in probably an afternoon or maybe two afternoons, right? Do part one, one afternoon, take a break, have a sleep, process it, come back the next day, do part two of the training. And um, there's about, I don't know, 15 to 20 videos all up. They're super short, less than 10 minutes. So you can, you know, it's not massive. It's not drip fed over six weeks. 
uh, you'll be able to binge on it pretty quickly and start taking action. We're also going to uh, put you in our community, which we run through Circle. We'll put you in our community uh, forum for ongoing support. Uh, uh, we'll be in there asking questions and uh, to help you. And all we're talking about is your offer. We are just going to get your offer right. Uh, your job then is to get on the phone um, and have more calls with your prospects and use the offer to sell new prospects and existing clients, upsell them into your signature system. We're not going to talk about product sizing. We're not going to talk about hiring team members. We're not going to talk about, uh, you know, profit margins. We're not going to talk about SOPs. We're not going to talk about any of that stuff. We're just going to keep the conversation laser focused on one thing, which is creating an offer your prospects can't refuse, which is why it is called the Godfather method. Okay. Uh, so that's where it is. Agentsmavericks.com yeah. slash the Godfather method. Click that link. Uh, and also we have this ridiculous 365 day money back guarantee, right? If you take the Godfather method, you take the training, you ask for help, you do the work. If you don't close a new deal in the next 365 days using what you've learned, just email me and I'll give you your money back. You've got a full year to come in and test this out. You've got a full year to come in and I'm oh, nuts to come in and test this out. And if it doesn't work, if you don't close a deal, all you got to do is send us, uh, the work that you've done, we, we give you a spreadsheet so that you can keep a log of the calls that you have, right? If you come to me in a year's time and go, well, I had a call with Johnny the crash repairer and I tried what I learned and it didn't work. And I've done one call in the last year. I'm not going to give you a refund, okay? You've got to do the work, okay? I gar- like I'm not, I know that I'm just not going to have to give anyone a refund because if you do the work, this will work. It's just, I mean, yeah, I've seen it, we've just seen it happen way too many times for it to be an accident. But I'm going to guarantee it. If you do the work and you uh, email us your log, your spreadsheet, share the spreadsheet with them, say, hey, look, I've done all these calls, man, and it hasn't freaking worked, and you ask for help, and we we work with you, and we help you craft your offer. If it doesn't work, I'll give you your money back because I don't want you to waste money on stuff that doesn't work. That's why I'm offering this guarantee because I know it works. Okay? I'm going to make them an offer he can't refuse. Love it. Marlon Brando. Such a great performance. The best. Um, uh, any, uh, any questions, any final questions before I go and rescue the keys out of the Tesla and send them home for my wife who is currently trapped at home and can't go anywhere with the kids. God damn it. That means the bins haven't been put out. That's what that means. That's what that means. It means the bins are now screwed for another week. That is my stepson's grandfather. Really? Marlon Brando is your stepson's grandfather? Are you serious, Robert? Wow. That's amazing. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right. Uh, hey, wow, that's incredible. That's amazing. Robert Mecklen's stepson is Marlon Brando's Marlon, Marlon Brando's grandfather. Grand, so grandfather. That means that he's your stepfather-in-law and Robert Duval is my no, cousin. It's probably wow. the other. Robert Duval is my cousin. Wow. Holy shit, dude. You're almost famous, bro. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right. Hey, this has been fun. This a song by Otis McDonald called Keep It Sexy. <laughs> Keep It Sexy. Oh, my God. All right. This has been the agency hour and three minutes. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, go check out The Godfather Method. It closes in a few days. So don't miss out because we're going to shut the doors. Okay? And I don't know if we're ever going to open it again, frankly. I know that's yeah, not, get, get, um, either get in that or get in Sales Accelerator. But let's go. That's not some kind of BS, you know, scarcity hour kind of thing either. Uh, scarcity <laughs> scarcity hour. The scarcity hour. Uh, we're closing the doors uh, in a few days and then we're done. So uh, get in the, the Godfather Method. Uh, hit us up on support if you've got any questions. Have a great day. Pete Perry. Pete Crispy Butter Perry. Thanks for hanging out again, brother. See you guys. Talk soon. Bye now. Right. Bye.